you don't need anyone's permission to tell your clients you're not going to see them. Do it how you want to do it. As long as you do the work on yourself and you do the work on your business, you're going to be successful eventually. Like it's inevitable, really. If you're good at your job and you put work into it, it's actually worse for you if you're doing it the way your clients want instead of the way you want. Hi, I'm Kim Tolson and I'm the traveling therapist. It's my passion to teach therapists how to navigate online private practices and multiple income streams so they can travel the world. I'm a digital nomad with a virtual insurance-based private therapy practice and a multi six-figure coaching business. I'm obsessed with entrepreneurship and developing tools that can help therapists live an adventurous lifestyle. In this podcast, I will discuss my journey as a digital nomad, I'll chat with other traveling therapists, and help you navigate the complexities of running an online insurance-based practice. I'm so glad to have you with me on this journey. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Traveling Therapist Podcast. I'm so excited to have Annie Strout with us today. She is a therapist who's living in Mexico, and she's kind of been all around Mexico from what I can gather. So I invited her on to just share her story and share her experience. And uh, I'm just super excited about it. So Annie, welcome and thank you. And usually we just start out with the question, like, how'd you go from being your typical therapist to a traveling therapist? Yes, thank you for having me. You're welcome. So my story is maybe different from some other people. I used to be a horse trainer. That was my first career. And then I found that extremely exhausting. Couldn't make any money. You couldn't do anything besides wow. train horses. So I decided to go back to school. And then as soon as I went back to school, basically around the time that I graduated, I was like, I want to live abroad. Oh, wow. <laughs> So after just getting an MSW, it's not like the ideal time to move abroad. You've just started a whole other career and something that's not really recognized in other countries. And Mm -hmm. so I looked for options to move abroad. Then I was looking into social work in the UK. I was looking into government things, but there really wasn't anything that I could do with that degree. Yeah. So I got a job doing community mental health, got my license. And then once I had my license, I was okay. Now I'm looking for a job again. Can I live abroad? And when, before I'd gone to school, someone had told my mother about the national health service Corps program. Are you familiar with that? No, I'm not So Mm -mm. really amazing program. It's for doctors, nurses, dentists, social workers, and I now think they take LPCs also. Oh, wow. And so you have to get the job first. They're in urban or rural areas in the U.S., and it's mostly in healthcare facilities, but there's some mental health ones, but it's not really therapy. There's no therapy places. It's all for, like, really community health. Oh, wow. So you have to get the job. And then you have to apply for the program. You may or may not get the program. And then if you get accepted, you get for two years of service, you get $50,000 for your student loans. And then you can reapply after that. So I had known about that and I was really hoping that that would happen, but I didn't know, you know, it's, it's very dicey. It's like, you have to move somewhere. You have to go all in. So I looked, so I got my license. I lived in Virginia at the time. I was looking at government jobs again. I almost moved to Hawaii. I was applying for jobs at like the the bases in Germany. It was like anything to get me out of here. (laughs) Wow. Those were not panning out. And I ended up getting a job that qualified for the NHSC in Philadelphia, which there's actually a lot of them in Philadelphia Hmm. um, for some reason, because it's not, it is urban, but it's not quite as urban as some of the other. places like Baltimore, you know, higher, what I would think would be higher need. But so I ended up getting the job. And so I ended up doing three years of service. So it was about four years total working there. So I had been wanting to leave the U.S. for seven years at this point. Wow. (laughs) Just like 
I had a really bad commute with that job. And it was, I learned a lot. It was in healthcare, which is now one of my niches with like health, mm -hmm. chronic illness and health problems. But it was brutal. Like all I wanted to do was travel. All I wanted to do was leave. <laughs> and oh my I, gosh. Like being trapped or something. Yeah, it felt very, yes, it felt very much like that. But of course I got great experience and my jobs were great and everything. But so I was like plotting my escape for like seven years. <laughs> wow. And I did manage to get my student loans paid off. So that was like a huge reason to stay and get this done. It was like the responsible thing to do. Wow. So, that's amazing. Mm. But basically from the time I moved to Philadelphia, I was like, okay, I'm going to try to get this done and then I'm going to leave. Yeah. So I ended up starting my private practice about a year before I was done with that job, started doing therapy. I've been doing some therapy in the community, in the community health, but it was not like, it was kind of touch and go. It was with like random patients who wanted to do it. Right. So it wasn't like, I really knew what I was doing. I was still learning. I mean, in clinical social work, you're learning all the skills you need, but it's not yeah. therapy. Right. So I was like, I'm just going to start a remote therapy practice. And when I'm done with this job, I'm leaving. <laughs> so yeah. along the way, I realized that Mexico was going to work out well because of, I have a dog, an elderly dog, so I could bring my dog and there wouldn't be any problems. No, no red tape, no quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So close to the US time zone. I had some friends living here. So at some point I decided that Mexico was going to be the base. And then in November, 2019, I left, <laughs> I just quit my job. And I literally wow. went from having a full-time job to the next week, having a full-time private practice. And I had like almost no clients. Huh. And, but when you make the space for something like that, things tend to come together. So I had saved literally only 10 grand to, to leave wow. so I left my things and came, got an Airbnb and then found a room in an apartment. And I just, so that's how I did it. I like, wow. Just like that. Well, I guess it, you've been planning it for seven years, but then when you were ready, it was like, you're out of here. Yeah, I, it was, there was no hesitation once I was able Oh my to God, that yeah. is amazing. So what was the decide, like, what was the day you were like, I'm done? Was there like, I like you had enough money or? I, well, one of the things I was going to say about this journey is that I ended up hiring a business coach, although he kind of became more of a life coach. His name is Tal Gurr. Oh. He lives in Bali. And I hired him because I was starting my business. I didn't know what I was doing. And he was like, pick a date, pick a date that you're going to go. Because if you don't pick a date, you're probably not going to do it. And this was in like April or May. And I picked November 11th because I knew wow. I was done with my job in July or I was done with my contract for the loans in July. And then I think I had some others. I wanted to stay for the summer and whatever. So I think I barely had enough money by then and I wow. barely paid off my loans, but like the last year was really intense. Like I was just so ready to go and I was just spending all this time planning everything. And like, I was so over prepared. It was ridiculous. <laughs> like, I knew where I was going to buy my dog food. And oh, food. wow. <laughs> everything. So I visited Mexico. I'd never been to Mexico except for one time. Wow. One time before. And I was just like, yeah, I guess this is it. So that's what I did. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Yeah. So so what part of Mexico did you go to? Had you planned that out or is it just like Yeah. So I had my dog, so I was like, he's old, so he's still with me. Oh. <laughs> but I was like, I'm not gonna be able to really do tons of traveling. I'm not gonna be like a full nomad yet. So where mm -hmm. can I go that is not gonna bore me? Like I'm gonna be able to stay and i've been living in philadelphia so i knew one of the city so i chose mexico city i knew one person i met a couple others before i ended up being here but yeah mexico city is amazing and has a huge expat community nice. so i really fell into the like expat there's many different ways to travel but i've fallen into kind of like the expat category rather than the nomad category because it is kind oh, of interesting a different culture and like a different 
group, sort of. Oh, what, like what is what is the difference? Like that's that's so interesting. I've not heard um, anybody say that. Well, the ex, I mean, the nomads are really, and maybe I'm also jealous. So oh. <laughs> but like, the, I mean, if you're nomadic, you're really moving around a lot. Like, right. You're not setting down roots. You're not, you might have some community in some places. You probably still have a base that's your home, where you're from. Hmm. And they all tend to kind of hang out together because it's a different culture of like, this is fleeting we're not you know some if you have very specific interests you might get into that community wherever you go but there's a mm. there's a nomadic community of like these are the events we go to these are the places we live and so i've had some friends dabble in that that have been here for shorter times but i've really never been exposed to that like wow interesting not, not a lot so whereas the expat situation is like because even in mexico city when you meet people out or whatever they're like oh, hi, whatever. And then you're like, oh, I live here. And they're like, oh, great. Like, then they really <laughs> want to like know you because they're so, these big cities or these tourist destinations are so used to people coming in and out, in and out, in and out. So mm -hmm. I have made a really great community of people who've lived here for a long time, who travel together, who have the same interests. So it's felt like a really great community. I know there's communities within the nomad thing too, mm -hmm. but it's really much more fast moving and yeah um, that and makes the, sense yeah so it i really enjoyed that part. i didn't know that that would be the case when i moved here that there was really such a difference because all all i listened to before i left was like nomad 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 like yeah travel, travel, travel. whereas now i'm like because of the pandemic i got here three months before the pandemic i literally haven't traveled anywhere except mexico <laughs> oh <laughs> wow yeah. A lot of Mexico, but that's it. <laughs> wow. That is so interesting. So, so for the expat community, do you just kind of like run into people and you figure out your expats or is it like an internet community and you connect that way? Well, usually in these cities where, or places that are really, um, travel oriented, oriented, or a lot of people like to go, there is a lot of Facebook groups to meet mm -hmm. people. So sometimes, you know, the nomads will post in there too, but I met some people through that. Like there's like five different expats in Mexico city, Facebook groups. And like, because I'd planned to come here for so long, it's like connections started coming to me before I got here. Like someone I'd met four yes. years before and didn't even know, like ended up posting something and I connected with them and they introduced me. So like, the more the planning actually did work out, I guess. But, wow. But yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's, I mean, I still feel like it's almost as maybe it's not as exciting as going different places all the time, but living somewhere is also quite interesting because every yeah. day or every task you have to do is still quite adventurous <laughs> and the language and everything. So yeah, I've really enjoyed that, but it's not what I thought. I was yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That is so interesting. So when you went down there, well, you had the dog, so you knew you'd be pretty like stable yeah, in one yeah. place for a while. Yeah. Okay. More or, less, more or less. Yeah. Like I wasn't gonna just move all the time. Right. I so gotcha. Like some people can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I kind of fell into that, <laughs> actually. It wasn't my choice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's so cool. So I guess you have gotten some traveling or moving around in a little bit right from what i understand because i know when i was down in cabo i had posted some pictures and you were like oh i was there for the summer or something so you're doing a little bit i guess of yeah. moving around some so what's that been like so while i was here when the pandemic started and okay. then i it was just pretty brutal <laughs> mexico has been a great place to be pandemic honestly but I ended up seeing someone and we were just like so ready to get out of the city during the pandemic. So I ended up buying a car <laughs> so that I could take my dog. And then we drove to Baja, California and took, well, we drove to Mazatlan, which is near Baja, California. And then I took the freight ferry to Baja, California. <laughs> wow. Quite interesting and uncomfortable. But with the dog, you can either, there's two ferries that go back and forth. There's either the like people ferry where you have to put your dog in like a luggage compartment. 
oh. for like 14 hours, or you can take the freight ferry and sleep in your car. Wow. <laughs> with that, uh, it's like, it's like a 15 hour ordeal, like between getting there, it's actually quite far in between the Sea of Cortez. So yeah. um, I lived in Cabo for like eight months during COVID and I loved it. Such great quality of life there. And there's good internet, which a lot of great beach places in Mexico don't have. Yeah. Um, and then I came back to Mexico City. But in the meantime, I drove to Oaxaca. I lived in Oaxaca for a couple of weeks, lived in Guadalajara for a little bit. I mean, I've mostly been here, but I have with the car taking the dog. I mean, I could have done it without the dog otherwise. I have stayed in a different other cities and places and then you can't really work in the best places in Mexico because there's no internet. There's no, wow. Anything. So there's a bunch of amazing places to go that I've been there, but it have, you have to take time off. So I plan all my time off around going to places without internet basically. Wow. So where, where are a couple of those? I'm just curious, um, <laughs> like where are the great places that have no internet? <laughs> uh, everyone loves Puerto Escondido. They oh, wow. have internet, but for therapists, because you need privacy and strength mm. of internet, it doesn't work. Any mm. like so, there's a bunch of places in Oaxaca like that. Wow. Let me see the the Pacific Coast, which I mean probably isn't like the safest either. But I mean like, <laughs> let me see where else would be. There are some places San Luis Potosi is amazing places in Chiapas. So if you're really, it's like nature stuff. So like there's some, like, I guess Chiapas and Oaxaca are like the main places in Mexico that people really love to go. Hmm. But wow. the more North you get for sure. Also <laughs> like wow. desert and mountains. Mexico is also very mountainous. I had my car like overheat at one point and I had to drive all through the mountains like literally I drove across the entire country with my car overheating so oh my god <laughs> it's beautiful to drive around so hmm. yeah. oh my gosh yeah when I went to Cabo I was surprised because of the mountains I mm -hmm. I guess I haven't seen that part of Mexico you know I've just seen like Cozumel and and like those areas so I was yeah, pretty surprised yeah. about that yeah it's so different the Pacific is so different from the Caribbean and then Baja is just really its own thing. I kind of call, I call it Mexico light <laughs> because it's a lot overall, a lot safer, just in yeah. general, like you can camp on the beach and you can drive around solo as a female. And it's like, it has a lot of North American qualities, but it still has enough Mexico. But I just, I love, I really don't like some of the more touristy areas, but there's so much rural areas. So like, that's another part, like, you can work in Cabo or La Paz or Todos Santos in Baja, but after that, all the way till you get up to like Ensenada, there's not good internet. So you, that whole area, you would have to not work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, wow. I love Baja. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. That I'm is gonna awesome. Go, I'm going to move back there. <laughs> Are you? My, well, the thing that's also amazing about Mexico is that, and I have several friends that now they've been here longer are thinking about doing it is like, in the right situation, you can have two houses. <laughs> like, so wow. I'm probably going to keep my apartment here mm -hmm. and have like people stay in it or rent out a room and then probably like split an apartment in Baja too, so that I can do both because they're exactly the opposite. <laughs> like, wow. Nothing, nothing that you have here is really there and vice versa, but I love them both. So I have another friend who's going to do that with Playa del Carmen and here. And some other people are doing it like San Miguel in here. So then you get like beach or you get rural and, and everything. But you, yeah, I mean, the cost of living, the cost of Airbnbs is kind of a lot that it's gone yeah. up. But if you want to rent an apartment, it's a huge pain as buying a car is, but you, uh, but it's affordable. So. Gotcha. And can you rent like, like month to month or do you have to do longer term? Not really. I mean, I think okay. if you dig and maybe if you're, if you're living somewhere already, you can mm -hmm. find a way to, to rent month to month, or you have a friend or you find a room or whatever, but in general, to get those lower prices, you have to commit. You I see. To like, yeah. Find a lease. Maybe I won't be here. Maybe I'll sublet, but the, the price is like less than half between like, 
if the Airbnb costs 2,500 a month, the local rent would be like a thousand. Wow. That's so, amazing. Yeah. And what's like a normal lease term? Is it like six months, a year? Usually a year. Okay. You can get, I have friends that have gotten six months. So wow, that's depends, cool. yeah, I mean, it also depends on your Spanish time of year, everything, but like it's, that's, I, I don't even know how much I'm going to be in Mexico city in the next like year or two. And I'm just going to keep my apartment because wow. I, I love it. And I don't want to deal with the, yeah. I, when I was doing the, I give actually nomads a lot of credit because when I was doing the whole drive from Baja to Oaxaca with the car breaking down and stuff, I stayed in like, I don't know, six or seven Airbnbs in like two months or something. And it was so exhausting. <laughs> like, it was Gosh. So, even when you don't work a lot, it's so, yeah. so now then I came back here and I was like, I just, I need an apartment, but that like, mm. if I was a nomad, I'd probably have a base in the U S mm. go back to the U S a lot, but mm -hmm. since I don't want to be there and I've established myself this way. My base is now here. Nice. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's really cool. Oh my gosh, you could have two apartments in different places in Mexico. That's that's good to know. <laughs> There's literally so many good places in Mexico. Like I'm all of my friends are moving to Mexico now. Wow. I've, like, I've like transformed them, but there's so many cool places in Mexico and they're not places that you're like, oh, I went and I'm going to like never go back. They're like places yeah. like, that you would go again and again. So it's probably like you're probably going to go back to Cabo. Like, just, oh my God. I loved it there. I was yeah. like, I could stay here for quite some time. Yeah. It has great yeah. quality of life there or at yeah. any of the beach places. So mm -hmm. I just love that about it. It's like, I'm going to go to Puerto Escondido for like the fifth time in like a year or something or, wow. or Acapulco or whatever. So mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So when you decided to move down there, did you speak Spanish or how, how did, okay, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I um was learn. I've I've learned it on and off forever. My job, I used some Spanish, so that I was okay. taking a trip. I that's the good thing about some of these community jobs with um, Hispanic um, populations. Also, work for like anyone that's um not that's like working towards licensure or not doing therapy yet, like healthcare. Mm. jobs where they need counselors or social workers or whatever have way better like everything wow so i got several paid trips to latin america to learn spanish oh wow had, like, because they were you know they have doctors and all these nurses and stuff on staff who actually require good benefits yeah <laughs> so I got, like a really good salary you know mas o menos and really good like continuing education and like all the, all this extra stuff that I could do with it. So, um, it's wow. like miles away from like the community mental health job for, to like the community health job. So I also got the loan repayment. It was, it was ridiculous. Right. It was such a good deal. So <laughs> that, I don't know that people think about that or like, you know, so, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I've yeah. never even, I mean, I guess I've heard of like working in rural places, yeah, can get your student loans paid off, but you know, I've I've never even heard of it really. Yeah, it's a whole it's a program. I mean, you're really rolling the dice. You don't know if you're gonna get it or not. Like the more they rank it from like, I think it's zero to twenty five. Like any of the places that apply, wow. so twenty five is the most need. Mm. So they they award that first. So basically, the more you sacrifice by where you're willing to live, the more possibility of getting the loan repayment. So I think mine was wow. like 15 or something. So it was really on the edge there. Wow. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So, okay. So you got some, some education with the Spanish and everything. So mm -hmm. uh, down there now, do you mostly speak English, mostly speak Spanish? How's that? Um, I, well, because of the expat situation, and I was just talking to someone about this the other day, who's Mexican and Portuguese, and they were just like the expat situation in Mexico city is just amazing. And I think for all ages too, like younger than me, older than me, like there's just so many. 
And um, so because there's so many of us, I speak a lot of English. <laughs> yeah, um, gotcha. So we'll, like you can really get by without working on your Spanish that hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's been to- my experience. Anytime I've gone to any country, really, I mean, yeah. it's everybody pretty much speaks English to some yeah. extent, you know? Yeah. 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 So cool. it, I would like it to be better and I'm taking, you know, lessons and stuff. But oh, you are? Not- not a requirement really to be super good gotcha where where are you taking lessons is there like a, a, a do you have a good tip on that or where to some people do unam which is like the university here you oh cool i'm just tired of private tutor because i don't le- <laughs> learn well in groups <laughs> <laughs> so i have like a colombian the spanish teacher but there's so many it's like a huge you know huge job market here for that like a lot of wow. people teach teach Spanish or wow, teach that... English to other countries in other countries, you know, online. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh my gosh. So, um, so when you moved down there, you know, I guess telehealth wasn't really a huge thing yet at that point. So what was that like for you? Cause you kind of built up a little caseload, I guess it sounds like for your private practice. And then it's like, Oh, by the way, I'm yeah moving. We have to do this I... online. Like, how was that? Well, I actually, ne- I, oh, I started it completely online. So the only clients oh, that I cool. had, even while I was still working, were online. They okay. were in my states of licensure, Pennsylvania, Virginia. And then I signed up for BetterHelp, which I only lasted like four months or something. But I, I still have a couple, I have clients that came with me from that, that I still see. Like, um, And I yeah. also did maven which is a online app for women's health oh cool so they have like therapists nutritionists it's all for pregnancy and like um, prenatal wow. and stuff so it's like an added benefit that some people can get on their health insurance hmm. so i added a couple of things but yeah i was totally online so it was not it was a little hard because what online therapy wasn't super acceptable. So a lot of people, you know, probably at least half of the people that I could have gotten said, I want to do it. First. So yeah, um, that, it was kind of not thought of as good enough <laughs> back then, unless it was something you wanted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know. I mean, now, you know, unfortunately, because of COVID, we all are able to do it and it's more accepted. But yeah, gosh, that must have been a big deal to <laughs> move to Mexico and go all online and take all your clients online and yeah. yeah, I mean, I it, it I guess it was, but I was just so like desperate. Yeah, <laughs> to go. I didn't care. And like, so when I see people being like, "Can I switch to online? Can I do this? Can I do that?" I'm like, "You can do whatever you want." I mean, exactly the rules as best you can. But like, you don't need anyone's permission to to tell your clients you're not going to see them. I get it, but like, yeah, you can do like I talked to someone before I moved it was like a friend of a friend and she was just this like super rebellious therapist she's like i don't care about my license i see people i just do the telephone i don't do notes like i don't do, this, I don't do that like and she had another job and stuff. And she was a real therapist and she was like she was like i'm doing it my way and people love it so wow like, yeah and so clearly you know <laughs> i don't even remember her name at this point but she, she wasn't following the rules as as we all want to but it was really a wake up call for me. Like do it how you want to do it. Like you're gonna, as long as you do the work on yourself and you do the work on your business, you're going to be successful eventually. Like it's just, it's, it's inevitable really. If you have a, if you're good at your job and you put work into it, like you don't have to, it's actually worse for you if you're doing it the way your clients want instead of the way you want. So true. Like having low fees, like too low of fees, like you end up feeling resentful you end up not being as present. You end up not wanting more clients. Like you really should do it the way you want to do it. Absolutely. So true. And, and like you're saying, the right people will find you. The people that fit into your schedule that will, you know, pay your rate that want yeah. to be in your niche that you're specializing in, you know, it's all gonna, you're going to attract that type of person to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you put yourself out there. Yep. That's exactly right. Wow. So, so are you doing, is it all therapy? Is it all people from Pennsylvania and Virginia or is it, okay. And I didn't know if you were doing coaching also, or is it all yeah. just, okay. Well, I start, so I'm doing the therapy with Pennsylvania, and Virginia, and then I started a, another business doing 
because my, my niche is chronic illness with the intersection of trauma and mental health and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be able to reach more people. So I started my second business called Health Compass. And I'm creating a course around like all of the content, all of the like special, like all of the people who putting together basically all the resources for that area, because there's not that many, <laughs> maybe yeah. it's more common now, but taking everything I've learned, all the people that I can pull from, putting it all together as a course. And I'm called, that's Holistic Health for Chronic Illness is the name of the course. And then I'm doing, I'm gonna do some got group coaching for women around mm. that, like women's self-empowerment. A lot of people contact me about tinnitus because I had tinnitus at one point. So I'm going to do some probably master class or some work on that. So I'm trying, I'm actually trying to move more towards that being my main business at some point, because wow. you know, with therapy, you have a lot of income streams with your, th with your <laughs> business and that there's a reason for that because therapy can be exhausting. Yes. Oh my God. I'm so like done with like 40 clients a week. Like I just oh can't God. do it. You yeah. know, I, I cannot do it. No. So <laughs> that, yeah. So I want to move, I would like to move in that direction, have that be my main thing. I love doing therapy, but you can only see so many clients. Right. They'll do a good job. So that I'm working towards the coaching with that. And I had, I did an entirely separate LLC website platform, like everything. So it's been, it's so much work, but I'm, I'm getting oh. there. <laughs> oh God. I feel for you. Oh my gosh. It is a lot of work, yeah. but it's worth it. You know, especially with something you're so passionate about, you yeah, know, that right. it's really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm excited about it. It's just, it, it is a lot <laughs> to do. Yeah, I know it. Oh my gosh. And it, yeah, <laughs> we could get into that, but it just like, yeah, it never know. ends really. Once you start, it's like, I was just telling my boyfriend the other day, it's like, okay, I'm like building this empire, but now it's like, it it's owning me. You know, it's like, yeah. now yeah. I have to tend to all the pieces, mm -hmm. you know, where really the idea is like, oh, passive income streams, you know, right. and I could travel right. more. In, but it's, it's kind of, I'm, I'm trying to find that balance myself, yeah. like, yeah. you know, very few clients and not as much you know, of the, the empire building kind of stuff. Right. Because also the, I really, when I do return to traveling more or as I have done it so far, it's like slower, like go for yeah. a month because when you work or you see clients, even if it's two or three days a week, you're missing that entire time. And then you also need to rest. And then you also need to drive or fly somewhere else. So you really need to give yourself a lot more time than if you were like backpacking. Yes. Oh my gosh. That is such a good tip. And we're, we're finding that. I mean, like a month ago, we actually did went full on digital nomad, you know, oh, we've awesome. been, yeah. So it's, it's, it's cool, but it's, it's kind of tiring, you know, yeah. and yeah. you know, we're finding like, okay, a week in an Airbnb and then another Airbnb. It's like, that's not going to work. I don't think like, no, no. Yeah. It's also, you get the monthly discount if you do a month or you can also message hosts and say, I'm going to stay for this long. Can I have a discount? Can we do it offline? So basically doing it slower is always going to be cheaper and mm -hmm. less stressful. Yeah, I really, I'm really finding that it's like, okay, it's just too much like getting in a new place, having to get acclimated, then trying to figure out is the internet even going to work? Like, where am I even going to find a private place? You know, yeah. it's, yeah. it's pretty stressful. <laughs> I find, and I'm still having this problem actually in my apartment in, in other countries. I'm sure it's a big thing. But in Mexico, it definitely is. Is like, I never I always am very careful about the internet. I talk to the people first. I know the areas I'm going to, but the lighting is like, oh, oh yeah, terrible. Like I have a ring light and another light and another light and it still <laughs> looks so dark. So I'm trying to figure that out. But like the lighting is just not very bright here and mm -hmm. there's not a lot of lights and sometimes they're half burnt out. So I don't think clients really care that much, but that is something I'm still working on because even in my own apartment, it still doesn't look bad. It's, it's a never ending struggle. Like even this podcast, like I've got a microphone, but every time I give an episode to the editor, he's like, your volume is like way different than the other person's volume. And I'm like, oh, I, God. I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I didn't think of that. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's just this, yeah, it just, it's never ending. Yeah. But, the, yeah. but it's and fun never, too. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it, and it's literally always fine. Like 
<laughs> I'll be like in the dark, like sitting on a pillow on the floor, like <laughs> with my computer on like the bed or whatever. I mean, it still works fine that you just need to be present, but it's not ideal sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear you. So do you think, you know, I'm just curious, like that, that seven years you had to wait, does it feel like it was worth it? Or do you, do you wish you had like gone about it a different way? I'm just curious, like, you know, cause it sounds like you got some, some education, you became a better social worker. You even got some Spanish training, maybe it like all prepared you or I'm just curious. Yeah, I think it was totally worth it. I, mm. you just have to make the, the best of it. I was super prepared. <laughs> I had my stuff paid off and it made me really want it, you know, that I couldn't have it for so long. And, you know, maybe it would have been nice to get here sooner, but it all really worked out once I did get here, even though it was COVID, which was ridiculous. But, oh my gosh. Uh, but I mean, being in Mexico during COVID was great. <laughs> so <laughs> I was really lucky that I got here before that, or I would have been really stuck. So, hmm. yeah, I mean, thinking about it it was it was really hard because you know you're seeing you once the more you travel the more you know people who travel and you're just seeing them all on social media doing all these things like i see a lot of people in like the different therapist groups being like i don't know when i can do it like <laughs> just you just gotta not give up on it basically but yeah it, it, it really did work out yeah because nice, i literally have like flashbacks of sitting in my car in traffic, just like listening mm. to Nomadtopia, which was my favorite travel podcast at the time. I just feel like, ah! <laughs> I hate this so much. I live in the ghetto and like, oh no. I'm like just want to do therapy and not deal with bureaucracy <sighs> and oh my God. It, but <laughs> it's funny now, I guess. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so glad you're able to live out your dream and be down there. <laughs> you do you think do you think you'll always stay in Mexico or do you think maybe other countries down the road or I'm planning to do more traveling at some point soon. And so unless I super fall in love with somewhere or maybe a person, <laughs> Mexico definitely feels like home now, which I was also not expecting. Like Wow. I really love the energy of Mexico. I love the people of Mexico. I love the places. I love, yeah, I just, I really love it here. And a lot of, a lot of people do, honestly. And, and Mexico City is pretty special anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I think I'm, I would like to live here long term unless wow. you know, something mm -hmm. really changes. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. It's <laughs> just really cool. Um, do you have, what is it, citizenship, I guess, or residency or dual residency? I just got temporary residency, which okay. is a four-year program, and then you can get permanent. With the temporary that I have, you are not allowed to work in Mexico. They, your your okay. income needs to come from somewhere else. But with temporary, you can register a car, get an apartment, get a bank account, get a license, not like literally you just, when you go get a license here, you just go take a picture. They don't, you don't even have to take a test. Uh -oh. <laughs> so that doesn't really matter, but I have temporary residency now. Most people never become citizens. Mm. Um, oh, okay. And I think the tax situation really depends on what your income is, like where your income is from. I don't, oh. if I never work in Mexico, I don't think I'll ever have to pay taxes in Mexico. Interesting. So, nice and i also love <laughs> the um are you familiar with the feie program oh no uh -uh. God, this is so awesome so it's a cat <laughs> it's an irs thing where oh. you stay outside of the u.s 330 days a year you pay only 15 percent tax what <laughs> only pay self-employment tax and like medicaid and or medicare or whatever so it ends up being about half oh like, wow so that for when you're starting a business, that's also <laughs> very helpful. Yeah. So I've been doing that too. I really keep track of not being in the US. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't work. You, not everyone can do that or would want to do that. But for mm -hmm. my specific situation, it, it's like great. Wow. That is awesome. So when you pay the taxes, I guess, do you pay them through like the state of Virginia still or? No, nope, both of those states. If you're not there, you don't have to 
pay them. Oh, interesting. So Pennsylvania and Virginia. Huh. They, yeah. So I, I moved my LLC out of Philadelphia because they're city taxes. Oh, okay. But both Virginia, I haven't lived in Virginia in forever. So both Virginia and Pennsylvania, as far as I know, don't correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't yeah. know. <laughs> so I do know Pennsylvania and then Virginia. I think you have to make a certain amount and or be there. So I haven't had to because I okay. was thinking a lot at first. So yeah, I don't pay state taxes right now. Either. Okay. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. It's confusing. Like my accountants don't even really know because I'm licensed in Virginia, but I've been living in Florida, but my business is registered in Virginia still. So we just moved oh, it to Florida. Right. Right. Um, right. And that's how we ended up talking the first time, I think, because of the Virginia thing. Yes. Right. Yeah. And the chronic health trauma stuff, you yeah. know, that's, yeah. I, I'm really, I do a lot of work with that too. So it's, it's yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah, definitely. I know we're kind of like going back around, but I'm just <laughs> curious, like, you know, with the chronic health stuff, I imagine that you focus some on like what you're putting into your body, like anti-inflammatory type foods and that sort of thing. And maybe gluten-free, I don't know. But in Mexico, like, how is it down there? Like, do you try to like eat like anti-inflammatory or that sort of thing? Or, or you know, I'm just curious. Well, I mean, I definitely focus on some of the practical things, but, and like different treatments and different supplements, okay. and stuff like that. So I always say like, talk okay. to your doctor, do your research, but I know about all these things that are not well known that can help, like, especially with like gut health and things. But I don't, so, I mean, you have to, you have to have bottled water here. You can't drink, okay. the, no one can drink the water. There, it's actually probably easier. Well, it is easier to be healthier here because <laughs> first of all, Mexico city has amazing vegan situation, like tons of amazing vegan restaurants. There's tons of great, like holistic practitioners. And also I think, although they get a lot of their food from the U S there's tends to be, as far as I'm told, there's tend to be less chemicals in the food. Oh, wow. Because literally I have a holistic practitioner in outside of Philadelphia and she was like, don't eat grains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they all have Roundup on them. When you leave, when you go to Mexico, eat whatever you want. <laughs> like, okay. Wow. So, That's amazing. Um, mm. Yeah. I mean, I don't Gosh. do, I just try to be healthy, but I mean, for me and for a lot of people, I focus more on like the stress part, like mm. stress and anxiety are lower then your inflammation is lower. And then you can maybe eat more things. Yeah. <laughs> but like, hmm. yeah, I've also had like amazing experiences with healthcare here. Like wow. I have just like, I need to listen to your other episode about the health insurance. I found it. When oh, I was yeah. <laughs> But because I have a, a plan, but it's literally just like a reimbursement plan that's you, you know, up to 30 days in the US at a time for emergencies and then anywhere else you can send in receipts and we'll reimburse. But oh, I, right. I end up paying out of pocket here for everything. Uh -huh. And sometimes it's a little expensive, like for women's health or something, but it's really not bad. And I get to see like the best doctors here. Wow. So I have like an amazing dermatologist, like an amazing gynecologist, like great chiropractor and all a great eye doctor. Like they're all affordable. So, and then I can, you know, there's all these other holistic things and like plant medicine is really big here. Wow. So it's kind of psychedelics and things like that, which, you know, the U S is kind of slowly, mm -hmm. I'm going to do a psychedelic therapy training. Like, Oh, wow. And probably integrate that into everything. Oh my gosh. Um, so Wait. I just, I feel like it's, I mean, Mexico city is very polluted. So that is bad <laughs> um, for like breathing, but um, <laughs> yeah. otherwise I feel like it's easier to be healthy here. Interesting. You don't put as much stuff in everything. Yeah. The Mexican oh, wow. diet is pretty basic. It's like vegetables, corn tortillas and meat, which I don't actually became a vegetarian after I moved here. Oh, wow. So like easier than in the US, there's just, it's affordable. Like you can go get, you know, dollar fifty vegan tacos, like on this at multiple places, which would never happen. No, like, no, like, you can't eat anywhere without spending 20 bucks at least. No, I know. <laughs> you know? I've heard the prices have gone up so much since I left and I'm just mm -hmm. like, 
terrifying. Yeah, it's it's really bad. But yeah, I could just go on and on about yeah. this forever. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, yeah. I just was curious about that just from like, you know, trauma, chronic yeah. health type perspective, like how it was different down there in, in Mexico and in all of that for you. From yeah, your experience. I, mean, I focus more, I like to have a lot of the resources and like suggestions, but I focus more on like the trauma and the mental health part and like yeah. energy, spirituality, when people are into it, like I like to pull in all the like, like how, how, how might you be contributing to this besides the diet is important <laughs> for sure, but like mm-hmm. besides those things, mm-hmm. because our bodies are always trying to talk to us and we really don't like listening. <laughs> I am that way. I, you know, I'm gluten-free because I have celiac, but I'm also oh, supposed to be God. dairy-free and egg-free, but like I eat cheese and I'm not supposed to, and then I pay for it later. <laughs> right, you know? right, right. Well, you can also, what I've learned from a couple places is, I don't know, you might know, like everyone has their own thing with this, but taking digestive enzymes can really help with that. Yeah, no, I should do that. I take a probiotic or yeah, probiotic, but I probably should be taking digestive enzymes too. Yeah, they really help. I started having this like reflux thing for a while and Mm -hmm. I'm after a hugely stressful event, shocker, Mm -hmm. and I was taking them. I'm taking a bunch of, I'm taking some aloe and some apple cider vinegar and other things for the stomach acid. But when I started taking more digestive enzymes, like I was taking three pills instead of two, the reflux like went away. So I, I literally just oh. didn't have enough acid in my stomach. And that's how a lot of the allergies or the other things at least start. It's like your body yeah. can't break it down. Wow. Do you have like a brand you recommend or um, I'm just, I'm not, now I'm just getting advice from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we trade. I like Diva, D-E-V-A, but that's just the one that I've like bought here. But okay. it's vegan and that's like, I get all my supplements from that place. So Cool. Um, but it really helped. I'd never had stomach problems before. So I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, that, that has really helped. And I, if you, stu- I was, I study a lot of autoimmunity stuff and like all starts with the stomach. It does. The gut health. I know it does. Yeah. It's so true. Mm. Well, again, I could talk about this for hours <laughs> <Yeah>. also, but, <laughs> but thank you so much. This is been so interesting and I just love that you're like living that dream and you finally got out of the United States after all that all those trials and tribulations so where can people find you like if they want to even like get involved with your coaching around what we were just talking about my website is Annie Strout Counseling and healthcompass.international is the other one and then my Instagram is healthcompass.international wow that's amazing so when will your course be out is it already out Oh. I'm finishing it now, so it will be available soon. Okay. And then I'll be, I'm going to do probably a couple master classes soon and then hopefully do the coaching in the fall. So oh, wow. it's like, as you said, so you're like, I'm just going to do this now. And then your life is like, no, you're yeah. not. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> so I had some false starts on that. Yeah. Oh, I hear you. It's mm. really, I, the, the entrepreneurship journey is insane. Like it, it really, it's, oh my gosh, you have to face all of your demons, all of your shadows. It's so I've done, a, I've done a lot of business coaching and like other, and like I'm doing a feminine energetics thing now. I mean, when you wow. work for yourself, you can do all these things, but they're, it's like endless how much improvement you can do. Or, oh my gosh. Yeah. You, you know, because you can do. Totally. I mean, cause it could be so easy to just be a therapist. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, it, it yeah, takes yeah. nothing out of it, you know, but it's exactly. like, like, I, I really hear you on that. Like public speaking, I hate it. Right. Oh, yeah. I get asked all the time to do these live, like webinars in front of all yeah. these people. And I just say, no, I just, I can't do it. I just oh, I've can't a, do it. I've got a, a friend <laughs> for uh, to, uh, a course. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but I, it's like my Achilles heel, you know, but it's yeah. like, you know, you know, be, doing this, like putting yourself out there with this entrepreneurial yeah. stuff. It's like, it's almost like you have to do it. So it, it's, it's tough. Yeah. You just yeah. spin the wheels if you don't, yep. if you don't work through it. So it's been, Ugh. I didn't know about any of that either. Like if you really want to be, if you want to just fill your caseload and see clients, like that's amazing. That's plenty. Right. <laughs> like, but if you want to do something 
you know, off the beaten path a bit, or even very off the beaten path is my kids. Like, it's really a ton of personal work, which, and it's, it's crazy too. Like we're so used to seeing therapists and being therapists, but like some of these coaches are really good too. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. It's It's true. Oh my gosh. You're so right. Mm. Yeah. They they really get at it. (laughs) Yeah. Seriously. Well, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing your course when it's out. Let me know when it's out because I'd love to share it with people. Oh yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you so much for listening to the Traveling Therapist Podcast. For show notes, links, and downloads, head over to thetravelingtherapist.com, where you'll be able to learn more about my journey, the courses I've created for you, and other exciting resources to make your dreams become a reality. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share with your traveling therapist friends, subscribe to the podcast, and if you love this episode, please leave a review.